On my recent trip to the United States, I visited Colorado to drive up the Trail Ridge Road, an iconic 70-kilometer road that winds around forests and snow-clad mountains. It was completed in the year 1933 and has been luring driving enthusiasts ever since. My choice for this trip was the Audi Q8, the sportier twin of the Q7, perfect for these roads. Oh, it's starting to snow, it's super cold. Quickly tell me, what do you prefer, the Audi A6 or the Audi A7? If your answer is the A7, then in all probability, you have a thing for four-door coupes. You see, coupes have that knack, they make people go weak in their knees. But when it comes to coupe SUVs, well, things can get a little polarizing. But the Audi Q8 may not get all that hate. I think from where I'm standing, it looks quite good. Here in this setting at the Trail Ridge Road in Colorado, in all this snow, I think it gels right in and yet manages to stand out. I don't think there's a single bad angle on this car, but if you think otherwise, do let me know what it is. It's a pity that in this lovely setting, I don't have a cameraman, so I'm gonna have to shoot myself and show you whatever I can of the Audi Q8. And if the footage is not enough, I may have to resort to B-roll and that car may look different, may have different colors. So please excuse me for that. But I'm still going to put all my thoughts together about the Q8 and tell you what I feel about it. Let's begin with the design. I think that front end looks stunning. It's very sporty, the sportiest that we've seen ever on any Audi Q car. The side profile, well, it looks balanced and sporty at the same time. And that tail, which is usually a sore point on any coupe SUV, I think Audi has done a great job designing the Q8 and making it look the way it does. Especially when the lights play their animation, that is when the tail looks its best. The seamless lighting strip highlights that this is one of the more premium Audi cars. If you take keen interest in automotive history, then the black applique at the rear of the Q8 will remind you of the original Quattro. At the front, the Q8 employs Audi's new Matrix HD headlamps, which are quicker and more capable at reading the various elements on the road and traffic for adaptive lighting. The chisel detailing of the Q8 is the most exaggerated form of Audi's current design theme and is instrumental in making the Q8 look sportier than most coupe SUVs out there. As may be evident already, it's not as tall or as hefty as the Q7, but its wide-bodied squat stance awards it an aura that sets it apart from the other Audi SUVs as the sportier kind. To that effect, the Q8 silhouette is reminiscent of the Lamborghini Urus, and that is a compliment. In fact, the Audi Q8, the Lamborghini Urus, and even the Porsche Cayenne for that matter, are tied together by a common thread called the MLB Evo, which is the same basic platform for these three cars. So with this platform, the Q8 gets access to a 48 volt electrical subsystem, rear axle steering, and enough processing power in the computers for these three high definition screens, two on the center console and one behind the steering wheel. This layout is common across newer cars from Audi and will soon be seen on the new Q7 II, which will debut mid-July. We often complain that Audi's cabin design seem very similar to the lesser Volkswagen and Skoda cars, but this layout fixes that. The cabin immediately feels more premium and driver-focused. Which it is. Everything is angled towards the driver to make it more intuitive, and some of the common touch points or even the top of the dashboard is done up in optional leather. But what makes this cabin feel more premium, more expensive is the attention to detail like the Alcantara here or even the soft damping for the center armrest or even the bolstering. You have air cushions on the sides of the seats which can be inflated to give you better comfort or to give you a snug fitting bolstering when you are driving around the twisties. All this makes it feel quite nice. Now Audi always gives you the option to tuck away your infotainment in case you are not using it. In the Q7 it simply slides into the dashboard but in the Q8 you have this large screen which simply dissolves into this piano black finished panel. It looks quite nice. I'm not a big fan of having a touchscreen for the AC controls but this is something that we have to get used to sooner or later. The second screen doubles up to provide additional information, functions and text or handwriting input. A good example of the kind of versatility that this screen offers is right here. When you are in the AC menu, you can simply click on the seat and on the top screen, it pulls up a menu for the seat, for different functions of the seat. So here is a massaging function, you can control that. You can also control the ventilation function or the heating function and it can also decide which part of your backside you want to focus on. 
that is super cool. You also get a 3D surround view to take a look at what the surroundings are for easier parking. Now here there's a lot of space but in tight parking spots like back in India you will get a lot of options like you slide the screen out and you get different options with all the cameras on board. You also have a proper 3D view which renders the car in 3D also shows the steering angle so you know exactly how close you are to the curb or to the divider so that you don't curb those good looking alloys. I think this looks quite good. A little Bavarian I think. A page out of BMW's book looks very similar but look at the resolution on this. Look at the slickness with which it works. It's even showing the movement of the other cars. Excellent stuff. No gesture controls in here though. But that's not something that I would complain about. Even the AC controls for the rear seat are the touch type, elevating the premium feel of this cabin. You get four zone climate control, which particularly comes in handy in weathers like these. Getting in and out of the car, not a problem at all. The doors are nice and wide. You don't sit too high, not too low. So if you're an adult, if you're a kid, still getting into this cabin is super easy. You don't have to climb in like you usually do in an SUV of this class. This is somewhere around the midpoint. Also, the kind of space that you see, brilliant knee room, brilliant headroom for a coupe SUV, easily the best in the category. Unless, of course, you cram in three adults in here. Not going to be very comfortable with this tunnel console. And if you have three adults, you sit fairly close to the door and then the headroom can become a bit of an issue. But two adults and a kid, no problem at all. But if you need more space, then the Q7 will be a better bet. In fact, this is not even a seven-seater. But for a five-seater SUV, I think this is the best kind of space and the most plush space that you can get. Visibility outside of the windows, excellent. But for a kid, may not be so much because this ridge is quite tall. But if you need to get a look out, well, the window doesn't go down completely, only about two-thirds. My drive only lasted a couple of hundred kilometers and of course, in the driver's seat, but the rear seats, like the front, seem plush and comfortable for long-distance journeys. There's plenty of space in the boot for those journeys too. Unlike some newer cars though, the seats can't be dropped electronically, which is unexpected. I like the LED lights inside the boot though. The slash profile for the tailgate doesn't give you the flexibility to keep large suitcases upright, but there's enough depth in there to store a week's worth of luggage. On the topic of road tripping and mile munching, there's a good chance that Audi might go the Porsche route and say no to diesels, but only for the Indian market. And that could mean that the Q8 that is coming to India could only get a petrol engine option. The petrol engine is a stonker of a motor, a 3-litre V6. I ideally want it to be on the German Autobahn or maybe in the German Alps to be driving this car and exploiting that engine. This is a beautiful location, this is a beautiful road, it's an iconic road, but the speed limits in the US. But then again, they are in line with what speeds you will usually do in the Indian scheme of things. And I think this engine is an absolute gem. It has a healthy 500 Newton meters of torque that is fed to an 8-speed automatic gearbox and the Cotro all-wheel drive system. This is the same engine that you also get in the Porsche Cayenne. This engine is also found in some of the Porsches and once you know that, then it leaves you wanting for more. You want a more provoking soundtrack to go with this kind of performance, with these kind of numbers and sadly, the Q8 doesn't do that. I'm guessing that when the Q8 comes to India, the air suspension will be offered as a standard fitment and if it's not, it's better you take it. I'm usually against air suspensions on the Indian scheme of things or the Indian roads, but with the Q8, it adds a whole lot of versatility and that is the reason why you should take that box. For starters, if you have air suspension, you get 205 millimeters of ground clearance and it can be raised to 254 millimeters if you want to take go off the road or simply tackle tall speed humps. It will also lower the loading lip of the car every time you want to load something in the boot by up to 65 millimeters, which makes it quite convenient. And when you're around the twisties, when you dial up the spirit while driving, it can even hunker down itself to 165 millimeters off the ground. That's sedan territory. So does the Q8 handle like a sedan? Not really. 
so certainly do not expect this car to go around bends like an Audi A7. But think of this as a car that is better equipped than the A7 to take on poor roads and then you might discount the bit of body roll that it has. So the Q8 certainly feels tighter than the Q7 when you're tackling bends, switchbacks like I am right now. So it will be safe to say that this is easily the, the quickest, stiffest, fastest SUV that you can buy from Audi India until they start bringing in the SQ range of course. The handling manners of Q8 are generally very good and as you would guess, they seem over-engineered for the speed limits that you will usually encounter. For a driver-focused car like this, I would have also liked the drive selection or the drive mode selection to be more conveniently accessible or more intuitive in where it's placed. Right now, it's a part of that second touchscreen and you have to take your eyes off the road to make a selection and to even see what selection you've made, which I don't think is a great idea. The Q7 does a better job at that, placing it right on the center console with a different shape for the switch as well. So it's very easy to remember and very easy to access. What gets a switch, however, in the Q8 is the assistance system. Now, you have a lot of assistance systems with the cameras and radars. In fact, there are 24 of these sensors that help the Q8 see and understand things and then make or rather give you different assistance systems. And if you think they're too intrusive or if you don't like some of them, you can simply turn them off. The Q8 is convenient to drive and how? The steering wheel, light and convenient as always, so especially driving it in the city, you're going to enjoy it. Around the twisties like I'm driving right now, even in dynamic mode, it doesn't feel as involving as you would expect in a driver's car like this. But then it's super convenient and very easy to live with on a day-to-day -day basis. In fact, the Q8 is quite a convenient daily driver as well. And when you hit the twisties, there's enough performance from that engine and the drivetrain overall to give you that kind of enjoyable performance. So despite being a driver-focused car, it is extremely easy to live with as a daily driver too. But when it comes to that, one will eventually compare it to the Q7, which certainly offers more value. You will appreciate the Q8 for the sportier form of course, but if you still need a more compelling reason to choose it over a Q7, it is this. The Q8 is a more accessible alternative to the likes of the Porsche Cayenne. It certainly doesn't sound as great or drive with such razor-sharp precision, but then it has plenty to keep you entertained, both inside the cabin and behind the wheel, without breaking the bank. So all things considered, I am pretty impressed with the Q8, and I'm guessing you would be too.